Today I'm going to be upgrading my racing simulator. This right here is a system that I've had for over two years now that I bought from Podium One Racing, which is a company that I actually work with. Now, when I bought this rig, I didn't. I was one of their second or third customers when it came out. And if you guys haven't heard of Podium One Racing, they make turnkey racing simulators. So they put all the best components of rigs together so you don't have to think about it and they're ready to go turnkey. Now, they also sell individual parts if you want to build your zone out, but they do a really good job of fully building systems out. So I was the second or third customer, like I said, for them. And this is their P2, P3 model, which is one of the lower end models. And there's a lot more things I can upgrade about my rig. And now they've built so many different rigs that there's a few different options that I can have that are gonna be better than the ones that I do. And like I said, I work with them. I do their social media and stuff now. So I've been around a lot of the parts. And so we're gonna be actually going to their warehouse to go ahead and pick different pieces with the owners of the company to see what's gonna be best for my rig. Here's the rig right now. I have a triple monitor set up, AOCs. I'm gonna be keeping that the same. I do not have any motion actuator. So there's no motion with this, it's just standard. Eventually I'm gonna do full motion on this, but I'm gonna need a new monitor stand and a couple of different things. And it's like, seven to ten thousand dollars for that upgrade so i'm going to wait out on that but eventually i will so the first thing i'm going to be changing is the wheelbase and the wheel so this is a semi cube wheelbase and wheel this wheel is okay. I don't really love the flat bottom. I want to do a formula style. And then the wheelbase is semi-cube as well. Now that wheelbase brings out about 17 newton meters of force. I want to upgrade that a bit. Some of the wheelbases that Podium carries have like over 25, I feel like 27. I think I want to go that route. Next up is going to be the pedals. Now I have to do a lot more wiring and stuff on this and fix that up, which I will. But the pedals I need to upgrade. These are Fanatec pedals. Those pedals just aren't that great. So I want to get some of the best pedals that I possibly can. Let's go ahead and head over to Podium One's warehouse and go through all the inventory and find the best items that I need to upgrade my rig. I'm actually so excited about this because I've been driving this rig, but I cannot wait to get the full potential out of it because it already feels great, but I cannot imagine when we start upgrading stuff. What's going on, guys? I am here with Chandler, and we're doing kind of a revamp of my personal sim build. So I have one of the first units that was ever put out. Probably the second or third. Second or third, which now how many of you guys put out? It's probably four or five hundred. Four or five hundred. So yeah. when they first did this, components were different and I have one, not the baseline model, but like the kind of the next step up. It was a pretty solid build at the time, but some of the things we want to update yeah. and get going. The new products, hundred percent. Yeah. And then the new products already at the same level are better than, you know what I'm saying? Yep, there's, there's exactly. a, it's time for a refresh, better brands, everything like that. So Chandler's going to take us through today, kind of that process. I think we're focusing on wheel, uh, the wheel motor pe and pedals. I think it's the main three. Yep. Yep. And those are the things that I think will get us to a really good point because the monitors are great, the chassis is fine, no problems there, and then it's all from there just focusing on everything else. Yeah. A little, little, little more feel, a little feel. more feedback. Because I don't even know, what is the, the force on my current so wheel? So right now you have a Semi-Cube 2 Sport, which is 17 Newton meters. 17. And I'll talk you through it, but I think you need the Invicta, which is going to be 20, what is it, 27 Newton meters? 27 Newton meters. Okay. Sorry, a lot of numbers and all new meters. Um, and then pedals is going to be probably your biggest feel. Yeah. Where right now, you have the, the fan attack switch. We don't. They're, they're, all right. they're all right, man. I mean, they're they're less than mid, I would say. Yeah. At least the units you have. So we're going to get you uh, the Husingville Ultimates, which are by far the best static sim racing pedal. The only thing that you could go from there. It's expensive. as like an active brake pedal, but I think start you with the Husingville and then swap them out to active yeah. if you if you need to. And then for wheels, I've, I've got a few options for you. Yeah, we want to look through the wheels. So anything for that realm is going to be feel great to me because I feel like we can only go up from where we're at right now. 100%. So we'll go to the back. We're going to go to inventory. If you guys don't know, I work with Podium One. We do a lot of content already. And so as I'm here, I'm around everything and I'm like, all right, now I'm ready. Because I've had my rig, what, a year and a half, two years? Yeah, you, you got it. Uh, what is it? Right you got it in... Started, um, so. 2022 and you would have gotten it um you placed the order in june so you yeah it would have been like a late july or early august delivery okay so let's go to we already passed it hey, wait. is hey, so what a eh? um our motors are actually gonna be at the front so we'll start there so we get a lot of product from Assetec, which they're in denmark um for those of you who don't know probably one of the the most well respected names in sim racing for wheel, wheel bases is semi cube and we would agree, they're amazing brand, amazing products. However, Assetec bought Semicube's IP, and so for all intents and purposes, if I could simplify it, an Assetec wheelbase, at the heart of it, is a Semicube wheelbase. It's got the same technology, the same reliability, but they've massively built upon that platform with better software. You get the cool LEDs, and it's a little bit more uh, user-friendly in terms of just using it every day. Um, and so, yeah, we've got here, let's see, we got Forte, which is going to be 18 Newton meters. So this would be equivalent to what you have, which is extra Newton meter. Okay. Um, but we want the big boy, the Invicta. So 
Got another forte. Might have to. I know we just got a bunch in. Let's see what we got. Here we go. So we're gonna need this. This is a heavy. So this is 38 pounds, which. I mean, 30 pounds is heavy for a small, dense. Yeah, for how, it's like a lid. It's small. I mean, well, you see, obviously, there's a lot of air here, but you, we'll take it out. It, I mean, it's probably only about this big, but it's it's heavy. It's dense. It's all steel. It's magnet. So, yeah, here we go. Easy. Now, question on this. Will this be compatible with what the semi-cube is sitting in as a holder? So, we're going to have to get you a front mount. So, you have a front mount semi-cube, but it's a different bolt pattern, and, and it hooks up differently. So, we'll go through that, too, which... Our front mounts, I'll have to probably get weight or... Hey, Jacob, where, where do we have a Aztec front mount? Look, look at that guy. Because I was wondering, because it looked like it wouldn't probably be compatible. Front mount, yep, so you have to swap out your wheel deck, which should give you kind of a whole new look. And you got the integrated buttons, the power, and yep. the emergency stop. Um, so we'll go through that. Um, next is we want Husingfeld Ultimates. Which, these are cool because we used to order just the machine, like, silver. Now the new ones are black. So these are sprints, actually. We want to get you the big boys, Ultimate Plus. But still black. Now I have a three pedal, but I don't need a three pedal, so I assume we're not doing the third pedal because most of the stuff that I'm doing doesn't involve a clutch, and I'm not doing the shit. So it's up to you. Like, Do you want to do like a set of Corsa drifting, would you? I Maybe eventually, but right now, all I do is like iRacing on Barber Road Atlanta. And so I think that's one of those things where it's like, let's build it up, because eventually, do shifter then motion well so you have the three pedals so you can install the clutch with them and then just upgrade Either as way. needed yeah oh that comes with it i thought it was no no it's all you got a three pedal set so you can order the hoosing belts in two or three pedal we always do the three pedal because the hoosing belts are standard on our p1 and p1 ultimate the higher end builds which just come with everything yep. so luckily you've you've got that included and i actually don't even have a shifter either so that's we'll end up i'll end up doing the uh what's the new called? bdh, BDH. yeah so the new bdh coming out if you don't know about BDH, it's called a bazooka because it quite literally looks like a bazooka. It's a big, round, like almost cannon-looking thing. And it's got actual like tactile gears and feel in there. So when you shift, it's actually have gears and links that you can feel that you're shifting a gear. Whereas most shifters on the market, say like a V&M, which is a great shifter, or even a fan attack, like H-Pattern or Moza H-Pattern, it's all just force sensors. So you shift it in a first, and there's just you know, a little contact that's making, which BDH does have that technology but they've got that tactile feel, yeah. so. Uh, but you'll be able to go to sequential too, very easily. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've got our wheelbase, we've got our pedals, we've got our front mount. Um, really, from there, we just need a wheel, right? And wheel-wise, I, I now I have a semi-cube one, but I when I initially texted Steve, I was like, I'm ready to upgrade my stuff. I said the Astatec Forte, that even those at the base level is gonna be, be I feel better than the wheel I have now, just because shift lights and things of that nature. Yeah, so there's a few different, like, do you want like a, a formula style wheel what do you yeah i think so because i don't really need i don't like the mine's a flat bottom right now okay so rather than like at boxes let's come over here and i'll yeah, pick up yeah. a few wheels and you can kind of let me know I know there's like levels and i've been around all of them i have been i've seen the craziest one that they have so i know you don't want this but we've got the acetec you can just hold this for a second yeah. round wheel so this is going to be like similar to what i have now except it's alcantara it doesn't have shift lights but it's the flat bottom which, which sometimes gets a little bit annoying. I feel like that that style is like this is formula style is works with road racing and everything. Too. Okay, so we have this, and then I want to find a. We might have to walk to the front, GSI, GSI just to kind of show different level of. I know there's a GSI up front. I know we got a few of the hypers right here. On the big boy, six inch. <laughs> That's, this is a hot wheel. So, with. A GSI wheel that's not made by Aztec, we need a quick release. So these wheels have built in. This is how it connects to the motor. It's very easy, intuitive, secure, makes the contact on the bottom. So it's true wireless, um, not through Bluetooth per se. It does have a wired connection, but you don't see a wire. With this, you see a wire, um, but it operates the same. So there's a little USB. Here, let me show you, Bo. It pl pops out and you can plug in the wheel. Um, but you need a quick release, which easy we can grab one of those. So, what are you thinking? I don't know. These are the three like. This is, I mean, honestly, these three because you don't want a round wheel. These these are, I think, the contenders for you. Yeah. I think whatever you recommend. There we go with the GSI. It's a big boy. Got the screen, which, personally, it's gonna be somewhat subjective. I don't find that you'll use the screen a lot while racing. You might. Yeah. Um, but it looks sick and you can, you know, through this, like say, little encoder here, 
you can cycle, you know, hundreds of dash displays. You can build your own, you know, if you wanted to like implement like some of your shoes, like you could, you could build like an Air Jordan, you know, dash, yeah. which is cool. So uh, really personalize it. All right, well, let's go grab that. Let's grab a quick release and then we got to like get it installed on your rig. And then next up is the, is the 12 inch or six inch? The six inch. I mean, it's about 12 inches it tall, like, it like but um, inches. that I drove it earlier. It's absolutely insane. Yeah, so all the D box that we install, the inch and a half fifth gen actuators this is the third gen um but it's six inches and in, i'm not even going to say the cost of these but it's um it's about the same cost as a is a, is a focus rs hello, hello. Oh, are you all filming? no you're good hello <laughs> hey man where's more meats at where more meats at bro no comment <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'll say in just a sec bro it's done uh, all right cool man all right so i need to load everything up into the car if you didn't see the new video on the 3rs go check that out but if you don't know this car has a front trunk and i'm gonna see if it all fit in there i think it should fit keller behind the camera let's see if this fits i think this should all fit it has a gmg center so um it's it's, not, it's decent it's got valves which i don't love but it could do sport headers and that could yeah. Open it up nice. I have faith in you here. Yeah, this is Tetris. I think I can do it. I need to take the parts off the broken GT3 RS behind this one. Let's go. What you does it have? Be, huh? What does it have? Uh, well, after you ran it off the field. Oh. It's pretty great, right? Run your car into a field. There's that. That's it. I think that'll work. Ready? Let's go. All right, so we made it back and we got all the gear. Thanks to my friends over at Podium One Racing. Go ahead and check them out. Obviously, I'm on their YouTube channel so you guys can see content with that. We have some insane stuff coming up. Just wait for it. But I am so excited for this. F1 qualifying's on. I'm about to sit here all afternoon, get this rig set up. Now, I basically firstly have to start by stripping down my old rig, getting it prepared for the new stuff because we're gonna be having a new holder for the wheelbase and things of that nature. So I gotta strip this thing down. Now, what's great about this is I get to do some wire management and make this thing mint because I love doing that and making it perfect. So we'll get to work on that today. Before I change things, I wanna show you guys a little bit behind the rig. We got the sound bar here. I need to upgrade that as well. We have the PC here, this is staying. Got a 3070 in there, pretty solid. So I think first I'm gonna start with taking off the seat so I can get to the pedals and get going on that. So here is the wheelbase. It is so heavy for being so small, but it's a semi cube, like I said. I'm gonna be putting this to the side and uh, I gotta take some of the other brackets off now. So these are gonna come off because we're replacing this entire thing for the new Acetec wheelbase. So here we go. That's what it looks like with nothing there. Nice and bare. But now I'm gonna go for the pedals and get that going. So I got the pedals off. Well, I got the pedal plate off. I have to disconnect this. That's kind of on there and it's heavy, but I gotta get this off. I got them off. These are the pedals right here. Fanatec Club Sport V3. Um, they're all right, but we got the Hoosen Felts. I'm super excited about it. Um, now, what I also love about doing this is it's an opportunity for me to clean the rig. Like this here, it's gotten all dusty. People's shoes and feet on it, so I get to clean this. Love that. So I'm probably gonna leave this off and put the new pedals on while it's off. It'll probably make it a lot easier and then put it back on when they're connected. I think that's the smart one. Took a bit of a break to go dinner or whatever, and uh, I was getting everything cleaned up. I'm now going to pull this out. So here's the box. This is the Acetec Invicta wheelbase. This one's gonna get a lot more force newt meters wise. And this is the piece I'm super excited about. So with Podium One, they have their P1 Ultimates is like the creme de la creme of sims we did one for joe rogan snoop dogg all these people we're working on right now and so they get the top of the line models this comes on that model which i'm excited about so i'm just slowly this is more of like instead of just getting the mac daddy right up front slowly building it i've had the rig for two years and really you know getting used to it and building it out so excited about that so i'm gonna pull all that stuff out i don't know if i'm gonna you know get too deep into it tonight because i kind of want to do it tomorrow when um 
I can watch the F1 race while I do it. To me, that's more fun. But I'm gonna pull all this out. Now I was curious, I think this is the same power supply as the SimiCube, and I, I have it mounted already, so I think I can reuse the power supply, which would be pretty sick. So I don't have to, because it's all mounted nicely right now. Um, but I'm gonna pull this out, get all this. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh my gosh, I thought I'd be able to pull it out in one hand. Oh man, that's heavy. This is like a brick. What I also like is it's got LEDs, which is nice. This whole, these are all LEDs on the top and on the sides and everything, which is gonna be nice. But that is heavy. We also get some stickers. Don't think I'm gonna use any of that, but I think that's it. Put this back. I will not be keeping these boxes because there's no point at all. I always used to hoard boxes like my iPhone boxes and everything, but not anymore. There it is, and I also unboxed this, which is where this houses the um, wheelbase, and so I have to, I think, remove this panel. I'll kind of figure that out later, but that's all removed. Then I have the pedals and the wheel and the uh, wheel hub, so my cat's coming in. What's up, mate? You smell that? <gasps> you smell that? Come here. She, I just spent like an hour cleaning my racing seat because she got sits in it and got cat hair all over it. You can still can't even see, there she is. So curious, whoa, it's coming up flopping. You want some attention? Here you go, here's your attention. Anytime I want to do anything. I don't even know if I'm doing this right, but I'm pretty sure my hair is also just so messed up. I'm pretty sure this comes off this could be wrong, but I think this comes off here and then this. So I'm removing the buttons from here and putting them into this mount. There's instructions online, I'm just doing that now. GSI Hyper P1, I am so hyped about this. This is levels above my freaking wheel. Oh! This looks like a Formula One wheel. Look at that. That's insane. Like Chandler was saying, the Invicta is a quick release, and so I have to have a mounting kit for that. Um, this is Aztec mounting kit right here. Goes onto the back of this wheel. This also has power, which you have on a cord here. Um, but right now I just have to mount this to the wheel so that I can do the quick release. And yeah, I think most people do this kind of medium one, but it's already pretty long. I might just do the regular. Yeah, I don't know if I wanna do any extenders yet. I'm just gonna try, I'm trying to think with my last wheel. I probably liked it out more, but this just feels like too long. This plate here goes onto the back, or you know, this plate goes onto here, and then this goes on the back of this, so. Gonna mount this up. I'm so excited for this, I'm telling you, man. So I think tonight my plan is to, I'm not gonna finish it, I'll probably end up doing the pedals tomorrow morning, so that I just have some time to mess around with it and actually like play with it a little bit. I was gonna wait completely till tomorrow, but I've already used an hour or so. And some of the guys are gonna hop on Fortnite in like 30 minutes. So whenever they're ready to go, I'll stop messing with this, but I'm gonna keep going until then. They include this here, which is clutch. There we go. Quick release. I can't. Wait, but it freaking will. Oh, so this is required for powering. What the Podium One guys do, I see, is you just kind of plug it in, wrap it around like this, and then this plugs in once you, or no, it plugs into this, it's on wheel, yeah, yeah. There we go. So then I can leave this cord on, kind of annoying, but whatever, and this goes straight on. And I did this next is so I can make sure that the angle and everything of the wheel base is correct. You can see that's where the connect is. And I just slide this on just like that. And now we're connected. Look at that. So now I could put the monitor back on that is right here, 
make sure that everything lines up and then put the seat and make sure that it all lines up. I excited him for this and Maple is being a menace. What do you got? Want this? Want this? So I think I need it closer. Um, I could put the wheel extender on, but I still have another like two and a half inches that I can pull this closer to me. So I think I'm gonna do that. It needs to be a little higher and a little more tilted down. It's a little more like that. I only have like that much room to go up, but I think that that's right. Yeah, I just need to go down a little bit. It's difficult because this wheelbase is so heavy that I have to like try to support it, but it's 30 something pounds. Oh yeah, that is money. I don't think I can get much better than that. The only thing is I can maybe sit higher. I can increase the front by one, so maybe that'll help. But man, that was stressful. Now I've got to tighten all these down. And I think that's good. Now, I need to secure this monitor. Um, that's not secure yet. And if you guys can see, there's like a gap here. What I do is I, one, line it up, but two, Podium One does this as well. Using electrical tape behind there just to cover that little gap makes a world of a difference because you don't really notice the um, seams there when you have that tape and when you're like really in it, you don't notice kind of the edges there. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead, get to that now, mount this up and be good to go, but probably doesn't make any sense to record that. So we'll stop it there. Set you right now, I'm setting up the brake, the accelerator, and I also have a clutch. I don't know if I should put it on because I don't have a shifter. I'm eventually gonna get a shifter, but I don't right now. So do I just put it on or do I leave it? Don't put it on and then I can add it on later. There's just no point for it to be on here if I don't have anything to use it with. Now I need to find out what the spacing is between the brake and the accelerator. Like the specifications so they give some online but i need to get a measuring tape and they're also in millimeters i'm not sure but i have measuring tape and hopefully I can figure it out so now i'm about to test the brake pedal difference with the gapping see if it fits right it seems a little far apart i have the brake and the accelerator backwards and throttle um, so now I gotta redo that. <laughs> so right now I just put the pedals in and I need to move the pedals back and adjust a couple things. And so I also need to extend this uh, wheel the, that attaches to the base, the quick release. It was just too short and didn't ergonomically feel correct of like how it was sitting in comparison to where my feet are and everything. It was too like sitting in a normal chair, not like sitting in a proper car. So putting this on now. Luckily, Acetec makes this pretty simple, and um, this has been a pretty easy process, so just finishing this up now, keep adjusting the pedals, and go from there. A lot of, so like, I like to, been trying to compare to the uh, Podium One Racing rigs that they have, because they use a lot of these parts, but my chassis is different than, mo they don't really use this track racer chassis anymore, so it's different, and a little bit, Harder to gauge what it should be like, but I'm just gonna make it work, baby. But definitely think I'm gonna get a new seat. I think I'll probably get a podium, or podium, a uh, Recaro seat. That'll probably be one of the next things that I get. And then from there, all I'll need to like really upgrade is new monitor stand, um, and then just the actuators for the D-Box, and then that'll be it. So I got this ready. Now I have to connect this to this plate, and then this plate to the wheel. So, it's pretty simple, not too shabby, and we'll get to it. This is taking a lot longer than I expected. Like, I've been spacing this out because I want to like do it over the weekend, but uh, I didn't realize the, how many adjustments I would need to make for the seating position and the wheel and everything, but glad I got started on it last night because I'm supposed to be going to the Podium One offices here in the next hour or two. So just gonna keep grinding this out until I go there. And I can get, I wanna get measurements for the pedals. I think that's gonna be a good one. And then I also just wanna, if I forgot anything, I'll make sure to grab it. But just what, just finished F1, Max 
DNF'd, didn't finish, and uh, Carlos won. So people in F1 are probably excited about that. And this video is gonna be probably an hour long, but whatever. Um So I pretty much have everything set up and ready to go. Let me turn this on. The wheel now is connected. We have the proper distance. Pedals and everything are pretty much perfect. All the controls now, what I have to do is do all the cable management. That is all not in a good spot, so I need to do that. I got the GSI wheel going. I need to program all these buttons here, um, but this is in a pretty good position. It's a little bit uneven here, if you can't tell. This is leaning a little bit down, so I need to adjust that. I really think I need to bring it down just a little bit. It's gonna be a little bit down, and that'll be good, and I'll be kind of good to go and do the cable management. So that's really where I'm at right now, is just cable management, last little final touches, uh, but then we're ready to go, and I'm gonna hop on uh, iRacing and get some, get some driving in. Probably won't show the cable management stuff because that is just long and boring, but I'll show you that after product. But everything so far, it's solid, I just went by the Podium One office and uh, saw, got some extra things I need, just some like cable ties and things of that nature. Uh, and I got some measurements of the pedals to make sure that the pedals are proper distance apart because they actually stagger their brake and uh, throttle. So I might try that, but we'll see. I pretty much got everything dialed in. Let me show you guys. Coming to the back, wires are all tied up. It's all pretty good. If you look from here, there's only one wire that goes up. There's that one too. Right now I'm adding the electrical tape right there to, because if you see right there, there's a little bit of light that comes through and then it illuminates it when you put the tape. Got everything pretty much how I want it, seating position, everything. And so now I just need to go in here and put all the settings onto this keyboard. Now uh, Chandler helped me, he gave me a video of like all the different things he does for the buttons. So I'm gonna start that now. Just like that, the upgrade of the sim is complete and I could not be more happy. This is stage two in the upgrade. There's gonna be another stage when I do full motion. I add a new seat. I might add bigger triple screen monitors, maybe the 45 inch. I don't think I need the Samsung Odyssey 55 inch or triple setup. I don't even think I have room in here for that. But the main things that we did, we got the new GSI Hyper P1 wheel. Super excited about this. You can change all the colors inside of it. So here's a couple different of the options that they have. So you can come in and do these pro profiles so I just downloaded the profiles here's one here it's green the one that I had it on was this Miami color as you can see it turned into like a blue then you also can change this dash right here so we'll click on this you can see I just changed it there put another concept so there's all these different ones you can put I just downloaded them directly from GSI so there's all those different things there which is super cool and then obviously we added the Husenfeld pedals these are the ultimate plus now I didn't add the clutch yet because I don't have a shifter which I will be getting eventually the BDH shifter is on the horizon so the main things that will be upgrading next I may keep the same chassis to track racer chassis I think it should work fine but I may end up getting a new one because I might get monitor stands that separate the monitors from the chassis but the main things would be getting the BDH shifter, adding the third clutch pedal, getting the Recaro race seat instead of having this track racer seat, getting the full motion D box, probably the one and a half inch, potentially new monitors, and then I would like a better sound system because the sound system is just a sound bar. The PC is good right now. I might have to upgrade it if I go for better monitors, but this rig is amazingly ready right now to go towards just more and more driving, more and more practicing. For a while I was like, Ugh, I just wanna wait and fully upgrade and go to the motion first and not like just keep it as it was. But then I thought about it and I was like, I even look at people like Max Verstappen doesn't even race with motion. Like the motion is super fun. But for me, if I'm looking as a training aid, I don't really need the motion because I have good experience with the you know traction loss and those things in real life. It'll be a plus and I eventually will do it. But 
for now, this is amazing. And shout out to Podium One, being the company that helped me put this together in the first place, and then now working with them and being able to make this rig that much better. So go ahead and check out Podium One. I'll leave a link down below. You guys can, if you have any information you wanna figure out building a rig, if you wanna build your, like buy a full pre-built rig, or Podium One sells a lot of these pieces individually as well. So go ahead and check that out. This video's probably been super long, but super exciting and cannot wait to get racing. And there's some misconceptions about building a sim rig that I wanted to talk about because Podium One does a lot of turnkey rig building. And a lot of people comment on social media and talk about how the parts don't add up to this, blah, 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 blah. They put together a system that works with some of the best parts in the world. With these rigs, it takes a lot of building and a lot of learning in order to get it to work properly. So when I first got this, the PC is all set up. It has all the games and everything downloaded. It has the pedals synced up. It has all of that. And I just had to do that again myself because I wanted to you know, upgrade it myself. And that took me probably two days of just figuring out the perfect settings, figuring out the adjustments and the distances between the pedals and like all that. And those are the things that Podium has perfected on hundreds of rigs. They know exactly where the pedals need to be. They know exactly the seating position, know exactly what software you need to function properly. And those are the things that are super valuable. A lot of people will say that, oh, I can buy those parts for cheaper and just do it myself. But the man hours that goes, I think 20 to 30 hours goes into rigs that they build to make it perfect, to make the wiring perfect, to make it sure that you have no hiccups, you can turn it on and start playing. And a lot of people who are buying 30, 40, $50,000 rigs don't wanna spend the time, they don't have the time to go ahead and do this. But the sim racing community is also built on people building their rigs and making it affordable. And so there can be both sides of those in my opinion, and that people can learn about sims and buy them and piece together with the budget that they have because podium is also working on a budget setups but then there's also the side of the people like the joe rogans who wouldn't spend seventy thousand dollars who don't have the time in the day to spend a week or two to build a rig and figure out what he needs and what software he needs he just wants to get in race and go